Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Mining Experience. The Mining Experience is a live podcast that invites professionals from the mining industry to discuss new technologies, address challenges, and share work experiences. My name is Paulina and I will be your host today. I'm a mining and metallurgical engineer from the National University of Columbia and I've been working with ProMine for almost five months now as a technical support specialist. Here is also our co-host Mohamed. Mohamed, how are you today? Very good, Paulina. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohamed Zaki. I obtained my, uh, a mining engineering bachelor from McGill University. I've been here with ProMine for three years and I'm the marketing manager. So today's topic is mining ventures in Colombia and uh, basically having one of the largest coal reserves in Latin America, Colombia hosts also a significant amount of nickel and gold. With direct investments from foreign countries, Colombia's mining industry is expected to rise by 15%, giving it the potential to attract larger investments. So in this episode, we'll discuss the different factors that affect mining investment and their implications in the mining industry in Colombia. Thank you so much, Mohamed. So well, today we will host two very special guests. Oscar Jaime Restrepo Baena, professor in the Department of Materials and Minerals of the School of Mines at Universidad Nacional de Colombia and member of the Minerals Institute, CIMEX, where he leads research in the area of extractive metallurgy, sustainability in mining and ceramic materials. He is also the president of the Society of Mining Professor 2019-2021. Professor Oscar obtained his degree in mining and metallurgical engineering from UNEL, completed a master's in environmental impact assessment and a PhD in metallurgy and materials too. He also completed a postdoctoral in the R&D laboratory at the company Nubiola. Excellent. And we also have the honor to host Mr. Juan David Gomez, Senior Trade Officer for Mining, Oil and Gas and Responsible Business Conduct at the Canadian Embassy in Colombia. His main work consists of providing strategic support to Canadian companies and investors interested in doing business in Colombia. Previous to his role as Trade Commissioner, Mr. Juan David worked as Government Affairs Coordinator for Colombia, Central America, and the Latin Caribbean at Shell. Mr. Juan David has been working with Global Affairs Canada since September 2017. On behalf of ProMine, Professor Oscar and Mr. Juan David, welcome to the podcast and thank you for being here. Excellent. All right. So, so yes. I All think, right. <laughs> sorry, Mohammed. I think go ahead, Professor yeah. Oscar is muted. Oh yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Thank there you. you. Go. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you, so, Mohammed. Thank you, Paulina. I'm ready to. to excellent. Thank you. And just to let everyone know, for people watching us on Zoom, uh, you can leave your comments and questions uh, directly in the Q and A button. For people watching us on Facebook you can leave your questions and comments uh, in the comment section, all right? So we're gonna start with a question that a lot of people might be interested in. So Mr. Juan David, are there a lot of investments from foreign companies in Colombia? And would you name maybe some Canadian companies? Thank you, Mohamed. Um, yes, well, uh, Colombia is uh, definitely a market that uh, brings uh, a lot of attention uh, from foreign investors. And that is definitely the case from companies in Canada. Um, Colombia has big investors um, in coal, and there are very significant projects uh, for precious metals, uh, mainly gold. Um, just to name a few of the investors where in, in coal, we, we all know big names like uh, Drummond, like uh, South 32, uh, Glencore as well. And these are some of the companies that have uh, a big footprint in the country in, in coal investment. And in, in terms of um, precious metals, um, we have sig significant investments in projects uh, in gold, uh, mostly in the department of Antioquia with uh, companies like uh, Canadian B2 Gold. CG Mining is operating currently the Buritica Mine, which was actually bought last year uh, from Canadian investors. And CG Mining is one of the biggest Chinese uh, groups in the world, Ch Chinese mining groups. And Anglo Gold Ashanti has a very significant project, um, the Quebradona project uh, in, the, in, in the municipality of, of Jerico. Uh, these are all just um, a few of, of, of some of the projects that have a significant importance for, for the Colombian mining industry. 
Oh, I see. Okay. And uh, Pro Professor Oscar, would you would you say that you know Canada does Canada s support mining in Colombia? Is that something um, that's happening right now? Yes, of course. Uh, we have a very good uh, relationship with uh, Canadian companies and Canadian universities. In that sense, it's important to say that Canada Canada is a very important uh, partner to the Colombian industry and the Colombian university. Uh, we work together with them. Uh, and of course, all our students used to go there in order to, to receive uh, education. I think in that sense, it's important to say Canada is an important place to our mining industry. I see. And Mr. Juan David, how, how do you see the support from Canada in Colombia? We are fully committed to the governance of natural resources in, in Colombia. Uh, to strengthening that governance and that expresses in in many ways for us uh, during the last few years Canada has played a very active role in the mining sector in Colombia from different perspectives uh, important private investment in exploration and development of projects um, cooperation programs focused in the strengthening the the governance of, of the mining sector um, and uh, another series of transversal initiatives that are more related to uh, making the sector more inclusive and more sustainable in the long term. Uh, initiatives uh, related to gender equality, development of um, inclusive po uh, public policy, promotion and protection of human rights, and best um, private sector practices. Just to give you a few examples of that, we are currently in the process of renovating a memorandum of understanding between Natural Resources Canada and the Ministry of Energy and Mines. Um, we financed, as uh, the government of Canada, we financed um, a very important part of the mining cadaster, which is basically one of the of the of the key milestones, the recent milestones of the. Of the of the Colombian government in the mining sector, which is basically a, a digital cadaster that that makes the administration of the information in the mining sector much more efficient, and it also makes it much more efficient for investors and and people who is interested in working with uh, mining titles in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to give you some examples about our development projects that are focused in in the mining sector in Colombia, I can mention the Comunica project. Um, this project ended last year, but it was a $19 million project that was basically focused in strengthening the institutional capacity of the public sector in terms of governance of the, of, of the extractive um, sector in Colombia. And uh, also CISAL. CISAL was uh, the Comunidades Inclusivas y Sostenibles en América Latina, Inclusive and Sustainable Communities in Latin America. Uh, which wa was a project financed by us, uh, executed by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities between 2014 and 2019. And it basically uh, focused in strengthening the governance of local municipalities um, in, uh, in mining areas of the country uh, in order to make sure that the development of mining projects uh, was also in line with local public policy and local actions to make sure that the benefits of, of those projects uh, were distributed in an inclusive manner with uh, the populations around those projects. So those are just a few examples. Um, I, have, I have some other that I can mention in more detail later in the conversation, if you'd like. Yeah, that's, that's very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Juan David. I would like to ask you, Mr. Juan David, what do you believe has been the key factor that has consolidated Colombia as one of the most important and attractive places for the investment, for mining, Canadian mining investments here? In our case, we see, we see several, but I think that uh, the, the most known factor is, is Colombia's uh, potential. Colombia's potential is amazing. There are vast mineral reserves, including approximately seven, almost seven billion tons of coal. Um, there is a significant improvement in, in the business environment in terms of the, the way the government has worked uh, to, to make the country a much more friendly and a more um, attractive uh, mining, uh, mining jurisdiction. Um, 
there is a full support that, that we can see from the Colombian government in, in the development of, of this sector and, and, and an openness to be very frank and to advance in the in the construction of solutions for the current issues that, that affect um, the, the growth of, of the sector in many ways. But if, if I had to pick one single factor is uh, that we all know, and, and, I, and I will highlight that, is, is the, the amazing potential that Colombia has as a, as a mining jurisdiction in terms of, of, the, of the reserves that it has in copper, in gold, in coal. We all know the trajectory that Colombia has as a, as a producer of, of emeralds as well. And, and we see that uh, there is a lot more to come in, in those fronts. Yes, I can imagine how there are also many exploration projects to be to be done, right? It's uh, It has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. So I also would like to ask you uh, to the professor Oscar Jaime, not just in the mine for mining companies in the investment here in Colombia, but will you say that what is the key factor that, for example, universities see here to see us to a, an attractive place for for make these relationships with the universities too? I think it's very important to think about the human talent. Here in Colombia, we have a very, very important human talent to, to develop and to create new resources in people, human resources. Uh, our students in mining, Colombia is uh, not very big in terms of university of mining. We have uh, a four, four schools of mines here in Colombia, in all the country. Different than Peru, for example, Peru has more than 25. But here in Colombia, we have four, but the, the, our capacity is, is, is great. Uh, all the people is uh, all the students are very compromised with the uh, with the uh, with the country you could say. I'm very interested to 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 develop in order to work in, in our country. In that sense, the first the first uh, topic we could resolve or we could uh, highlight is the human resource here. And at the same time, uh, in our universities. We have a lot of different MIUs with universities in Canada in order to create capacities uh, to work together in projects and to collaborate with the companies. In that sense, we, I think we had the possibility to create new realities and create, create new options in order to, to, to work in the future. Uh, and I think the talent here in Colombia is okay. We have to, to develop more things, of course. Uh, we had to develop uh, more uh, projects. Uh, we had to, to work more in research, of course, and it could be important to work, to continue working with uh, Canadian universities, of course. And thank you Excellent, so much. yes. And Professor Oscar, how would you describe the mine performance in Colombia? Like generally speaking, how do mines perform in Colombia? Colombia, we here in Colombia, we have, um, Big companies, medium companies, and small companies. A lot of small companies in different areas and different resources. Uh, when when David was talking about gold, we have we have mining companies, uh, big mining companies here that works in gold. Uh, but most of the gold that we produce comes from small companies uh, or artisanal small artisanal uh, miners mm -hmm. that produce gold. This is a very important potential because we could help that the small companies in order to grow, okay? Same in coal. In coal, we have uh, big, big mines. Uh, in the north of the country, we have open, open pit mines uh, on the surface mining that explode in a good way, with a good level, in a good production. Colombia produced near to 90 million dollar, 90 million tons of uh, of coal every year. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we we produce coal in the in the, in another places of the country in a small uh, uh, companies underground mining, uh, and with a lot of opportunities to to change the, their their conditions. Uh, we produce nickel in Colombia. We have a very uh, important company south 31 we we was talking about them and uh, south 32 produce nickel and the, produ the 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 production of nickel is very important in colombia because we produce 
Ferronickel. Ferronickel is the most important raw material to produce steel. In, in, in another countries, people, uh, another countries produce nickel, but we produce ferro-nickel, and it's, mm -hmm. it's great, it's a great news. Uh, it's a surface mining in the north of the country also. Uh, we produce um, limestone, limestone to produce cement. The cement industry in Colombia is very important because we produce uh, cement not only for our country, also to export. And that company has uh, mining activities, surface mining mainly. And the other thing, the other, the other, the other mineral is emerald. Uh, we produce, we have been producing emeralds for a long time ago, but uh, now, uh, since five years ago, we change. We are changing a lot because we are very technical. We, we have more technical conditions to the emerald production. In the in the in the past, the production was very artisanal and no technical way. But now we are changing the, the situation and creating new conditions for that. I see. Colombia has a lot of opportunities to 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 improve the mining activities. So we have we could be more mining than now we are. Uh, we, 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 are, we have a lot of opportunities, is my, my conclusion, because we had to develop the mining company, the mining industry in Colombia. I see. And it seems like Colombia is really involved in all types of mining, because you talked about coal, you talked about hard rock, emeralds, quarries. So would you say that one, like, are they all... Um, would you say that they're all segregated from each other or is there like a competition between, you know, like who's going to be the best, you know, uh, type of subcategory of mining? Like, is there, is there like, you know, like the, what's the, what's the biggest type of mining happening in, in Colombia? Is it coal or hard rock or would you well, say that there's... I, I was talking, I was talking about gold and coal, but we have mm -hmm. future in copper. Oh, we produce okay. we produce we produce some concentrates of copper, but now we will have a, a big company in in copper production. I mm, see. I think it's the future in Colombia. Colombia has to explore a little more our territory, uh, our uh, soil, our underground, in order to define the new categories or uh, the new types of minerals. Copper is the future. Of course, we have a lot of opportunities in gold because we have to create growth a little more. Uh, I think it's not a competency, a competence. I think all that kind of mining could create, could grow together, could, yes, uh, of course. to help each other, to to take advantage of the new possibilities, and with the support of the good national government, we I, I think could be possible to grow together. Grow the coal industry, grow the oil in gold industry, grow the emeralds and grow the copper. Copper is very, I think is the future here. In Colombia yes, of course, especially where, where countries like Canada, you know, requ require, um, you know, like in the future, when when electric vehicles, for example, become in, in more produced, get produced more, then copper, you know, will be in very, very high demand by or, then. So or, it's, our it's neighbors, a... our neighbors like Peru and Chile, mm -hmm. they have a, they are very important producers of copper. Yes. Uh, yes. Ecuador is growing. I know they are the, the develop discovering new new copper mines. And in Colombia, we have the opportunity. Now we have a project, a company who is not ready now. They are working in order to be ready as soon as possible. But I think. In the neighborhoods, we, we could have mines, copper mines in all the western part of the of the country. I see, and this is why you know, like uh, the there's Colombia has a huge chance, uh, well, a huge opportunity in in direct investments from foreign yeah. countries because Co Colombia is, is involved in a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of mining in all sorts. So yeah, uh -huh. that's good to hear. Yes, this is the idea. Uh, chances. I, I think the key word is chances. We have opportunities and possibilities to grow. Of course, to invest here is necessary to create. Mm -hmm. Pauline, I think you're muted. 
Yeah. As there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was muting the, the, the microphone. So, uh, Professor Oscar Jaime, I also would like to ask you on Juan David, Mr. Juan David, too. How are the Colombian policies, public policies now helping drive the mining industry in Colombia? Well, uh, I know Colombia, as I told you, is not a, is exactly a mining country. We had to, de to take that decision to say, okay, we are going to impulse all the mining activities, impulse all the mining companies, companies and create a public policy to help the mining activities. Uh, it's, it's okay, but we have to prove. It's my, my point of view. I know since your point of view, Juan David, according to what is your, your opinion? Oh, I think you uh, you started talking, but you muted yourself. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm no sorry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no worries. The story of our lives now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I totally agree with Professor Oscar Jaime. I think, uh, uh, as I said at the beginning, Colombia has uh, an amazing potential, uh, but we need to work harder in order to, to realize that potential. Uh, Colombia, I don't think it could be considered a mining country in the in the in the sense of countries like uh, Chile, for example, that have a much more mature mining market or an, a, an a vocation that is more explicit in that sense. But Colombia does have um, everything, um, every factor that it needs to, to become a, a mining country in all the sense of the world. It has, as Mr. Uh, as Professor Oscar Jaime said, it has the, the professionals in the country, it has the knowledge, um, it has the resources and it has the willingness of the of the authorities in many ways in many ways but there are challenges that we need to work uh, to, to solve um, first and and I think that uh, from from foreign investors perspective it's good to see that the government is more than open to discuss those challenges and to advance in those challenges but we also at, uh, at the same time as we say this we also need to recognize everything that has been done to the moment. The National Mining Agency is going through a, a modernization process that will definitely benefit uh, every every part in the in the mining sector, and um, and there are ongoing discussions and and, and ongoing efforts uh, by the Colombian government to solve some of the key issues that have affected investment in the mining sector in Colombia in terms of policy. Uh, one of those issues, for example, is the lack of coordination between environmental authorities and mining authorities in many areas. And we have seen a very active um, effort from the National Mining Agency to coordinate, for example, with uh, the National Environmental Licensing Authority and with, and with the Corporaciones uh, Autonomas Regionales, which are basically the, the regional organizations in charge of of mining regulation of environmental regulation enforcement, um, so that is a, a really good thing to um, to see. Uh, we also see a big effort from the from the National Mining Ag Agency in terms of promoting the sector and acquiring more information in terms of the mining potential that Colombia has. We recently saw the launch of the of the mining rounds, which is a, a very interesting first effort that, of course, may require some some um, tweaks uh, here and there in order to, to, to be more attractive, but it's a very important first step that, that, we, that we need to recognize. And also one of the biggest challenges that we see in the Colombian mining sector is illegal mining. And, and we also need to recognize everything that the government is doing and the programs that are being undertaken in terms of mining legalization, uh, of, of, uh, of legalization, sorry, and, and normalization of of mining activities and uh, all the all the potential good impacts that that has in terms of security and of stabilization and of development of key projects around the country. Excellent, thank you very much. And uh, so moving a, a little sorry. bit away. Oh yes, sorry, of course. sorry, Mohamed. Uh, I would like ahead, to, yes. to add something that Colombia is now. Colombia has the new. Uh, Commission, a, a commission of the resources and reserves standard. This is a very important issue in our country because some countries, mining countries don't have. 
Mm -hmm. No, we have now. We have we have a, a standard a standard of reserve resources and reserves, and that is a very very important issue in order to create a policy in order to be a mining country. We are now working because we have a commission. We we have a commission of Crisco. Crisco is very very important, and we we have a a a a, a, a place here in Colombia, and that is is, is a key point because after that we had the possibility to create new rules to develop our mining industry. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a very good point. Thank you for sharing that. So moving a little bit away from investment, let's go into you know the software part. So Professor Oscar, I know you know this might interest you. So um, let me ask you this. Why is a mining or geology software important? in Colombia's mining in industry? And how does it make a difference in your opinion? I think it's not only in Colombian mining industry, I think it's very important in all kinds of industries. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in mining industry in all, in all the countries. Uh, in Colombia it's important, of course, because we need a lot of exploration. Uh, or, or, or when Colombia needs to, to know a little more about the soil and now the, the mineral resources about the, the, the underground all the underground territory in order to say okay this is the composition of our land okay mm -hmm. and in that sense so far could be very very important some companies of course they had that they had the, the they have the, the different software licenses in order to work not only in geology also in mining activities to planning uh, planning is very important and of course to do the mining operation and that's a key point it's a key point to 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 highlight to say okay it's it is necessary to to support the mining companies in order to have the 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 software to to work here in, in our university, we have some softwares to, 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 to teach to the students and to prepare the students to, to work then in the future in the companies. And the companies then, mm. they have the possibility to, to work. Mm, but I think it's a key point in order to, to support the success of the- I see. Activity. And- as a professor yourself, what would you say is the most important aspect of a mining software that, you know, that would be very good for students, you know, that would help them and give them that valuable skill? Yes, of course, that's it's one, one, one of the most important things, that the, the, the support to the people to learn. Uh, the, the software is necessary that the software could be easy to learn mm -hmm. and easy to operate. Yes, not only in the level of the students' licenses, of also with the activity or the mine, mine activities. Yes, it's necessary to, that are very, very important. One of the points are uh, adapt to the reality, adapt to the, our conditions. Colombia is a tropical country, of course, not the same to war in Chile, to war in Peru, that to war in Colombia. The, the, the geology, the geography, the soil, the weather, the climate, all the things are very particular in here in Colombia. Of course, the software need to take account, to take that things into account. Needs to adapt, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's necessary to adapt yes. to this situation, these particular conditions. In that sense, it's very important that all the all the software could, needs to be flexible and Absolutely. have the adapting capacity to, to work in these particular conditions. It's, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's especially that the mining industry is very volatile. You know, it changes a lot. It can, it can change from day to day, you know. So as you said, like having a software that's flexible, easy, easy to, to use, that's very important because, you know, and uh, a, lot, a lot of people who work in mining are extremely busy. They don't have time to spend five hours a day learning a new software, you know. So it needs, you, need, you need something that's very practical, right, that you're, you're, you're able to learn very easily and use you know right away without having to because a software is there to help you it's not there to add more tasks for you uh -huh. so yes, finding it's, that it's, you know it's it, that you need to find that perfect balance as well yes it's, mm -hmm. it's, crit it's critical that for instance if you go to the cold scenes in australia they're perfect perfect like like like, like the book okay it's, it's 
you, you don't have a tropical problem we have here or seems cold seems are critical with movements, with falls, with uh, stretching, with change of composition. Mm -hmm. All that things are very complicated here. Our geology is not easy. Our geology is complicated. Yes. And of course, the 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 software has to be added, uh, could be adapted, adaptable to that situation. Exactly. Yeah. It needs to basically answer every mining conditions needs, which you know, as you explained in Colombia, if you have complicated geology then it should be flexible in that a software should be flexible in that way to adapt yes okay mm -hmm. thank you so much professor oscar jaime so mr juan david i will ask you uh, also despite the challenges uh, where have you identified the biggest opportunities now in the mining sector in colombia Thank you, Paulina. Before I answer that question, let me refer very quickly to the question before. I think that the work that companies like ProMine are doing is um, key for what is going on in countries like Colombia. Innovation is at the core of the transformation of the mining industry around the globe. And we need to make sure that um, everything or the best of that innovation is included in the development of the mining sector in Colombia. We, we, we have to recognize, and uh, I mean, I, I can't help to mention that the fact that countries like Canada have been built because of, 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 of their natural resources and innovation has played a significant role in that sense. And of course, uh, so words like ProMine are, are, are a good example of, of, of how can innovation um, be a game changer in terms of the development of key projects. And that's exactly what we are trying to, to do when we work in Colombia. Uh, it's one of our streams of work and is bringing the, the best of Canadian capabilities that are changing the mining industry in Canada and in other parts of the world and making sure that those capabilities are also uh, making a change in the, in the Colombian mining industry. Regarding the opportunities that we see in Colombia, well, um, I've already mentioned a few, but um, I think uh, that um, uh, mining companies uh, that are working in the country, again, are, are betting um, big in terms of, of, again, the potential that, 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 the, that, that the country has. We have, uh, for example, the, the B2 Gold uh, Gramalote project um, is an example of that. Uh, we see that there is a, a, a very significant potential uh, for the type of operation that Gramolote is proposing, which is an open pit, a gold mine, which would be kind of the, the first of its kind in the country. Um, but at the same time, um, as, 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 we, as well, as you probably know, the, the, the mining history, uh, also, also Colombia is not per se, as we said, a, a mining country. Mining has been present uh, historically in, 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 in the country it has been part of a, a very significant part of the, of the, of the history and the, and, the, and, the, and the building of, of this country. Um, artisanal mining is still a very significant part of the, of the gold production in the country. And then we see a lot of opportunities in terms of innovation and in, uh, and in making uh, these uh, traditional uh, mining activities um, and bringing them up, up to speed in terms of the technologies and the services that can be applied in order to make production more sustainable, in order to make it more efficient, and, um, and to see all the benefits that that would signify for, for the communities around the projects, for the people who are operating the projects, and for the country as a whole, and as the owner of the, of the natural resources. Um, yeah, but basically, uh, I would focus in that in, in the in the history and the and the windows of opportunity that we have for innovation and, and technicalization in, term, in, in in general terms of the processes here and um, and and in terms of the of the size of the projects and the potential that it, that that they have. I see. Excellent. And Mr. Juan David, uh, in your opinion, what characteristics make Colombia an ideal place for mining exploration? Um, we were talking a lot about the diversity of, of the mining sector in Colombia. So as Mr. Mm -hmm. as, as Professor Oscar Jaime mentioned, I mean, there is mining here from construction materials to coal to ferronickel 
to emerald uh, and, and of course copper it's uh, it's as he was saying it's a very very significant opportunity uh, we are uh, globally talking about energy transition and copper is at the center of energy transition efforts and colombia has understood understood that uh, very well and, and is betting big in terms of copper i i have some numbers here but i mean ac according to to some reports um there are around um, a billion tons of of proven reserves uh, and 300 a million of probable uh, reserves with an important tenor of copper in the country. Um, so that is definitely um, numbers and, and a potential that we cannot um, that we cannot ignore. Um, other areas of um, of interest uh, that 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 we need to um, to identify that have definitely uh, Played a significant role in shaping Colombia as a as a as an attractive uh, jurisdiction. Um, um, is for example the the openness that the country has for for for, for doing business. Again, there are some challenges that are more uh, related to to regulations how, and how ways how how, how things work um, in in practice. Uh, but there is definitely an openness. There, there is a, an openness. There is a strong message by by the government, and, and that is definitely uh, a significant um, factor in terms of, of why is this is this country attractive. There are many countries in the world that have significant opportunities in terms of their potential, but that mm -hmm. are completely uh, far away from from a position where where we can even discuss um, making foreign investments because because. The, Basically, the political or all the all the social conditions uh, do not do not allow it. And another factor um, is, as 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 Professor Oscar Oscar Jaime said, is is the people in the country, the the level of professionals. Again, there are there are not many mining schools in in Colombia, like comparing to other countries. But there is a lot of expertise, and 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 Colombia and these these few organizations that that um, are working actively in the mining sector in, in, in Colombia in terms of research and, and, and capability building. Uh, they do have a, a very significant experience to share with the world and to translate into specific action uh, for making specific projects um, uh, operative. Um, so that is definitely something that, that we see as, as, as an amazing potential and, and that um, on behalf of Canada, we, we are trying to, to make more connections with is that the capabilities that Colombia has with the experience and, and, and as well the, the, um, the, in general terms, the knowledge that, that has been built as well uh, from, from the Canadian experience. Thank you so much, Mr. Juan David. No, so sorry, Paulina. Uh, another <laughs> thing that uh, an opportunity is we don't know our territory. We, we need to know a little more, a little no, a lot of more about our territory. Besides the things that Juan uh, said, it's important to, to look more, to, to, to have more maps, to have more surveys, to have more data, data of our geology. We need to know our geology. We need to know our soils. We have to create maps about our resource because it's, it's, it's a lack of information. And in that sense, I think it's important to create new realities, new opportunities to invest in exploration. This is a key point. If we work in that sense, we, we like, we, we will discover more because it's possible. We are very diverse, a diverse uh, country and we need to know a little more. Yeah, and let me build on that because what you're saying there is very important in the sense that in the sense that we we already know that Colombia has an amazing potential, but yet we only have knowledge of 71% of the geology of the country. So we have another 29% to go there, 70% of the geophysics, and 35% of geo of the geochemistry. That is the level of knowledge that we have. And with with so much still to go and, and so, so much potential already proven, then we can only imagine what, what, what could come with further exploration and where, with the implementation of new technologies 
uh, that allow for that exploration to be more efficient and, and to be and to be more effective for the benefit of the of the future projects. Yes, in that sense, it's important to say that foreign companies come here to explore, and that will be great opportunities, not only for the companies, also for our country. Thank you so much, you both, for your comments. And um, now, Professor Skarhamen, regarding to more to the academic aspect, I would like to ask you what do you think or what innovative ideas uh, in the research aspect have been implemented for the Colombian universities in the mining sector? Okay, um, the mining sector is a, is a huge, in, order, in, in sense of the, we have a lot of fields of work, a lot of topics to research, and different activities to, 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 to prepare. In Colombia, we have uh, four school mines, uh, Universidad Nacional de Colombia in Medellin campus. Uh, we have the mining and metallurgy engineering program, uh, geological engineering, petroleum engineering. Uh, of course, we have a school of engineering. We have 12 engineering programs in our school. Uh, another school mines is uh, UPTC, UPTC is uh, Universidad Pedagogica y Tecnológica de Colombia, it's in Sogamoso. Sogamoso is a very important place to produce coal and iron. They are some my iron important. And of course, in Boyacá, Boyacá is a very important de department or region that produce minerals. Uh, the other school is in um, Santander, Norte Santander, uh, in Cúcuta. Cúcuta is the city in the, near the border of uh, Venezuela. Uh, and they have an, uh, an school of mines and they, they have a very important uh, resources in coal. And of course, they produce also uh, building materials, bricks and ceramic products. And they, they produce that. And the, the other, the four, the fourth school is uh, Fundación de la Ariandina. They have two schools. One school is in, a small school in Bogota, and the other school is in, in Valledupar near the coal mines. We have, we have different possibilities to, to, to educate people and to research. In research, we have the uh, master programs and PhD programs here in Medellin, North School Mines. And we had research in different topics. Uh, in the classical geology, exploration, uh, mineral resources, uh, and geotechnical uh, and geodynamics, geological, geology in general. Okay, it's one, one important thing, one important topic. The other is in mining operation. We had to work in different act mining activities uh, like plan, mine planning, uh, ventilation mining, uh, and of course, uh, technology, machine, machinery or something. And these are very important topics, research topics. The other is uh, metallurgy and mineral processing. We have a lot of possibilities to, to grow in that sense in order to define, define the, the, the new topics, new fields of work in order to develop our resources. For instance, for gold, it's important to define the refractory, the refractory metals or refractory ores in order to define how we could uh, make the treatment, okay? There are no other topics in economical, mineral economics. It's a very important field of work. And the other key point is in sustainability. It's, it's a great point, an important topic to work because it's transversal. We have a different kind of professional to work in sustainability mining. Mainly now that uh, we are looking for create new project, new mining project as Quebradona from Angrobala Chanti or B2 Gold. Uh, they are preparing new companies here in Colombia and they are working in communities where exist communities. And we have to work in coexistence among small miners and big, uh, big mining, big, big companies. We have to worry that in that topic is sustainability. And of course, environmental topics are great. And of course, different aspects in mining. We have to worry in that kind of things. We have to continue working in that. And of course, making a strong lies, strong uh, relationships among different universities in the world. We have to, we we are we have been working in, with in Canadian universities 
in British Columbia, in, in, in UBC as a university, in Alberta, in Quebec, in Toronto, uh, in McGill University in Montreal, uh, Laurentian University. Uh, I, I think that is one of the most important university we have been working in Canada. That's a, that's already a lot of universities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we have a lot of things to do i can imagine a lot of things to research it's, i think it exists a lot of possibilities really for sure yes excellent thank you for your detailed answer very very much appreciated and just to let everyone know for people watching us directly on zoom you can leave your comments and questions in the q a or if you're watching us from facebook you can leave your comments and questions <laughs> in the comment section uh below the video and our guests will be happy to answer you. So moving on, uh, Mr. Juan David, how have foreign mining companies impacted Colombia positively? The impact has come in many ways. Um, the first I, I can think of is that uh, foreign companies in Colombia have been, have been risk takers. Colombia has been a scenario of, of, of important development for junior companies. And these have been companies that take the risk of coming to the country and venturing into unexplored areas, acquiring information that results key to develop the specific projects afterwards. So that's the first impact is uh, risk takers. Second impact when it comes to bigger uh, and company, bigger companies and companies with more experience is standards. International standards play a very significant role in the development, the responsible development of the, of the mining industry. And we have companies here that uh, have come with uh, standards from different jurisdictions and applied them locally and have brought the discussions about specific standards uh, to public policy and regulation development. So that has been um, a very important aspect of that in that sense. Um, Speaking in terms of, in terms of uh, socioeconomic impacts, um, we have to consider the specific uh, circumstances of some areas of the country that are very remote. So um, projects in specific areas of the country have brought opportunities that were not there before in terms of uh, local economic development. So, um, foreign companies uh, developing mining, mining projects are companies that are betting not only on the development of a specific resource, but on the development of the area where that specific resource is, uh, is, um, is located. So uh, these companies have become uh, creators of jobs. They have become uh, capability builders as well. And that is making a significant change that is uh, generating a significant change in, 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 in some uh, communities um, in the country. So I, 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 would, I would stick to those three as, 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 as some of the main um, contributions that uh, foreign companies are doing to the mining sector in the country. Perfect, Mr. Juan David. And now regarding the biggest challenges, uh, what has been the biggest challenges that foreign mining companies have had to face when investing in Colombia and how have they overcome it? Well, uh, I think that uh, those those challenges are, are very much related in many ways to uh, the coordination uh, among public institutions in the country. Uh, because we have seen that in some cases, uh, the, the legal framework uh, has, been, um, has been questioned in many ways. We have seen uh, projects that, have, that were awarded specific, uh, I mean, uh, titles that were awarded uh, and that were being developed. And then after they were being developed, they were being challenged by other parts of the of the of the Colombian system, for example, environmental authorities, and of course that created a lot of uncertainty in terms of of of, of the the legal framework for the country. But again, uh, how that has been overcome, it, it's is I cannot say that it has it has been overcome yet. Um, but it's definitely a process. We we see that um, as I mentioned in, in the beginning that there is a much a much uh, more efficient coordination between 
environmental and mining authorities in the country. And that is definitely going to generate a very positive impact in the mid and the short and the long term in terms, in terms of the viability of, of uh, specific projects. Another challenge that is constant and that we can never um, ignore is the, the license to operate, uh, the social license and the reputation of the mining industry in the country. We have to understand that as we also mentioned in this webinar, uh, the, uh, there is a significant level of illegal mining activity in the country. And that illegal activity that does not respect laws, that does not respect respect the environment um, that is in many in many cases associated uh, with um, security threats uh, to the communities and to the country as a whole uh, that is not that is not what we consider uh, mining uh, but that is uh, what in many ways rests in the in the collective uh, uh, ma mind of, minds of people when we think about mining uh, people still in many areas of the country think that mining and that modern mining is related to to these uh to these illegal mining activities and that is one thing that we are working very hard uh to um to address uh, that issue we we need to uh, uh to uh, build knowledge around what modern mining is around what are the processes that modern mining requires on why can modern mining actually go hand in hand, hand in hand with uh, with uh, other economic activities and and with um, with a sense for sustainability in the in the long term and and in terms of the benefits that that that, that it brings to the country. So um, that is a very important challenge in terms of uh, um, social license and reputation, and uh, is there is still a long way to go in terms of solving that. But I think we're getting there. And um, actually, this gives me the opportunity to mention another important project that we are working on here, and is the implementation of the towards sustainable mining standards in Colombia. These were uh, uh, standards created by the Mining uh, Association of Canada um, that have become um, a product of export, to say some way, because these are standards for auto-regulation of the industry that have worked very well in Canada. And now we see more and more countries, more mining associations around, around the world interested in implementing them. We are seeing uh, these standards being implemented by the Australian Mining Association, by the Mining Association in Brazil, in Argentina, in Spain, in Norway, in the Philippines. And we hope that uh, this year we will make the official announcement that they are being implemented in, in Colombia. Uh, thanks to the, the, the work that we have been doing in the past two years with the Mining Association of Canada and the Mining Association of Colombia. So again, um, many challenges. Uh, I cannot say that that uh, they have been solved, um, but we are definitely uh, it, it, it's work in progress, and, and we and we see that with uh, with optimism in terms of, of where we are going and, and what we can expect of the of the growth of the mining industry in the country. Excellent. Thank you for your response. Very informative. And let's check the comments here on Zoom. Looks like we're good on Facebook. We are good. All good. No more questions or comments. Uh, Professor Oscar or Mr. Mr. Juan David, would you like to add anything else to end this discussion? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say, uh, really, we have some problems. We have some difficulties. Social and political difficulties is, is normal mm -hmm. in, in every country, but uh, besides that, we uh, we had the opportunity to to be left behind that situations and to progress about the new possibilities to create new realities and to have a very very positive perspective of our country. This is my position, of course. I am professor. Uh, as a professor, I have a positive point of view in the future because we are learning to the young people. Uh, but I'm very happy. I'm very satisfied for the young people. Paulina is the example of that. She's a uh, young people who are now working with a good uh, uh, education, with a good, excellent level of English. He, he could, she could explain his thoughts, and now she's working in a in a, in a company in order to to create new options. 
In the same sense, the future is clear. The future is, of course, is different, but we have a lot of opportunities. We have a lot of options, and it's time to realize that opportunities. Thank you so Excellent. much. Perfect. And that is and that is very true because Paulina actually received the best award for software test yeah. special specialist. So uh, you you're <laughs> definitely right about about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, thank, job, you so Paulina. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Paulina. Thank you, Okay. So well, with this, we conclude our podcast today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Also, thank you, Professor Oscar Jaime and Mr. Juan David too, for sharing your experiences and thoughts with us. We really appreciate it. You're being here. Yes. Thank you, very much for having us. Thank you so much for your attendance. Really Thank appreciate you very it. Much. Have a good day. All right. Have then. Day. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care now. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.